In this lesson, we're going to create a pipeline that writes data to Snowflake tables using the Snowflake destination. In a data collector pipeline, you can use the Snowflake destination to write to any accessible Snowflake database, including those hosted on Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, and private Snowflake installations. The destination stages CSV files to either an internal Snowflake stage or an external stage in Amazon S3 or Microsoft Azure. Then, the destination sends a command to Snowflake to process the staged files. You can use the destination to write new data or CDC data to Snowflake. When processing new data, the destination can load data to Snowflake using the copy command or Snowpipe. When processing CDC data, the destination uses the merge command. Snowpipe is a stream set supported alternative to copy and can improve performance. Additional Snowflake configuration may be required. See the Snowflake documentation for more details. The destination writes data from record fields to table columns based on matching names. The destination can compensate for data drift by creating new columns and tables in Snowflake when new fields and table references appear in records. You can also use a connection to configure the destination. When you configure the destination, you specify the Snowflake region, account and connection information, and the number of connections to use to write to Snowflake. You can also define additional Snowflake connection properties as needed. Finally, you configure the Snowflake warehouse, database, schema, and the tables to use. You specify load method properties and staging details, and optionally define advanced properties for Amazon S3 or Microsoft Azure. You can optionally enable data drift. When enabled, you can have the destination create new tables if you aren't using Snowpipe. You can also specify whether to create all new columns as varchar instead of inferring the type and whether to create decimal columns for decimal data. When processing CDC data, you can specify the primary key columns for each table or have the destination query Snowflake for that information. Let's now go ahead and create Snowflake pipelines. In our use case, we will sync a MySQL database with Snowflake. We will build two pipelines. The first pipeline will use the Snowflake copy function to load existing data into Snowflake. The second pipeline will use the Snowflake merge function to sync new data from the origin into Snowflake. Before we can add the Snowflake destination to a pipeline, we need to ensure that the Snowflake Enterprise Stage Library is enabled and installed on the authoring data collector and any data collector that will be used to run the pipeline. Let's go ahead and do this. For our use case, we need the JDBC and MySQL binlog stages in addition to the Snowflake stages. Your deployment may already have the JDBC and MySQL binlog stages installed. Once new stages are enabled, the data collector engines need to be restarted. As you can see, there are two pipelines, one to load the MySQL table to Snowflake, the other to load changed data or CDC into Snowflake. Looking at the first pipeline, it's a simple pipeline. We're using the JDBC multi-table consumer origin to load the Samata reviews table and send it to Snowflake. In the Snowflake destination, we'll dive into the configuration soon. Because we do not need the pipeline to run forever, we will capture an event that will indicate to the pipeline that there is no more data left to process, and thus will stop the pipeline. This is done by enabling events on the origin and using the pipeline finisher executor stage. The second pipeline is the CDC pipeline. Here, we're sourcing from the MySQL bin log and writing to Snowflake. Notice that for this Snowflake destination configuration, we will select the merge option. 
In order to successfully merge the binlog CDC data, we do need to prepare the records so that the Snowflake destination knows how to process each record. We have created a fragment that contains all of this logic to simplify the pipeline and included it as a middle stage for this pipeline. Now let's build both of these pipelines from scratch. First, the table load pipeline. Let's add the JDBC multi-table consumer origin. And then go ahead and add the Snowflake destination. If you already have a connection to the Zomato database, reuse it, or you can create a new one. For the Snowflake destination, let's build the connection. Choose the authoring engine that has the Snowflake stage installed. Set the connection type as Snowflake. You will need your Snowflake account ID, username, and password. Once set, test the connection. We also need the Snowflake warehouse name, database, schema, and table details that can be found in your Snowflake account. Retrieve the stage name from your Snowflake database. In our case, we named our stage the same name as our database, Samato. Now let's try this configuration. Before running the pipeline, let's validate. Notice that the validation failed because the destination could not connect to the table because it does not exist. Let's select Auto Create so that the destination will create the table. Let's also preview the pipeline to quickly inspect the first few records. Before we run the pipeline, let's also add the pipeline finisher executor to stop the pipeline when there is no more data.
We first need to have the JDBC origin produce events. Then we'll add the pipeline finisher stage and configure its preconditions to check that the SDC event type header attribute equals no more data. Once this event fires, the pipeline finisher will stop the pipeline. Now we're ready to run the pipeline. Let's go ahead and run it. Data was loaded into Snowflake and the pipeline was automatically stopped. We can also verify that the data was loaded in Snowflake. Now let's go ahead and build the second pipeline where we will run the MySQL CDC into Snowflake. Let's add the MySQL binlog stage and configure it with the reusable JDBC connection. In this case, it would be the same Zomato connection. We're setting the server ID here to 1. You can get more details about the server ID and enabling MySQL binlog in the Build a CDC Pipeline lesson. You can also set the origin to read from the beginning. For large binlog files, this may be a time-consuming option. For our use case, we'll leave it off. Also, for this use case, we'll set the max batch records to 10. Now let's add the Snowflake destination. We'll configure it soon. Let's also add a pipeline fragment that will prep our MySQL bin log records for the Snowflake destination to consume. If we expand the fragment, we can see quite a bit going on. This is because we need to ensure that the Snowflake destination can 1. Understand the type of CDC operation, insert, delete, or update. 2. Remove unnecessary data that should not get persisted to Snowflake. And 3. Provide the correct mapping of fields and keys that the destination can parse. This fragment will be shared for you to download. Let's go ahead and complete the Snowflake destination configuration. Most of the configuration will be the same as the first pipeline, except for checking the merge option. Enabling table auto-create is not necessary as the first pipeline will have created a table. In the data tab, Let's enable the Processing CDC data checkbox. We'll also need to map a primary key so that Snowflake can know which row to successfully merge with. For now, we'll keep the defaults in the Data Advanced tab. Now let's validate the pipeline.
Now let's start the CDC pipeline. We'll work with a restaurant, Redcord, by making an update to it and seeing the change reflected in the pipeline and in Snowflake. The restaurant can use some more votes. Let's update this in MySQL. In our Academy Labs environment, we'll get into the MySQL DB Docker instance and then log into the MySQL database. Let's update the votes for this restaurant from 641 to 10,000. The row has been updated. Now let's see the change in the pipeline. We got an error. We find that this is a common error and can be corrected. When Snowflake auto-created the table in the first pipeline, it inferred the field types. In this case, the source type is integer and the destination is boolean. We can fix this by altering the table column. We can also set the destination to ignore type mismatches. We'll also select the ignore missing fields box. Let's restart the pipeline and make an update. Update the votes to 100,000. We can see that the pipeline successfully processed that update. We can also validate that on the Snowflake side. Let's delete the restaurant in MySQL and see that it's removed from Snowflake. In this lesson, we loaded a table into Snowflake and then continuously merged change data to ensure that the origin database and Snowflake stay in sync. Developing Snowflake CDC pipelines is easy. Now it's your turn to try. 